I, I am in one of the big uh, CO2 sinners these days because I'm flying the world all the time. So I came in from Munich yesterday. There was 250 people gathered for uh, the online print symposium. So that was uh, very interesting. We got an interview with uh, Reiner Hunsterfer, who is the CEO of uh, of Heidelberg, and uh, as you know, Heidelberg is in, uh, I don't know if they are in troubles, but the media seems to think they're in trouble. So uh, I think that later today we will have that online if, in case anybody should be interested in that. So very shortly, I, I know most of you. So um, my name is Morten, and uh, I wouldn't say that I'm an authority in video at all. So maybe everything I say today, today has not really any value, but I have learned everything from scratch because when we started Inkish uh, almost six years ago, uh, I never touched a video camera, I never made a film, I never did anything, I never tried to upload anything to YouTube, I had no idea how to spread things, I had no idea about anything basically. And uh, today we have 208,000 viewers of Inkish, so apparently we did something that was for some people right in the industry. Um, so I want to share some of the stories that we, uh, how we do things and how we see things. So you don't have to do the exact same errors as we did. You can start on a little bit higher level if you like. Um, Jordan, if you want to share something that we did yesterday, if you want to just elaborate one minute about what we did yesterday at the old tip. Yes, yes. I will do that in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, I'm a, I'm a overweight. Uh, I have uh, three kids. I am 51 years old. <laughs> I have a stupid Danish humor. Uh, so now you are all uh, <laughs> aware of what you have to look into. Um, the thing is that I love print. Uh, I love print. Uh, I've been working in the printing industry. Uh, in the industry from 2000 and before that I was a marketing manager for, for Roland Scandinavia so we spent more than a million Danish kroner a year on print. Uh, I am one of the persons that actually buy a lot of magazines. Uh, I have even encouraged uh, th that the industry should give uh, gift cards to the employees so they could buy printed products in the kiosks so we could support our own industry. As some of you may recall, at one of the Graphcom events, I asked how many is buying books on a regular basis, and that was a scaring low number, even in this industry. Then I asked how many were subscribing to a newspaper, even lower. Then I asked how many frequently buy a magazine, even lower again. So we, as an industry, we are not even using our own, our own media, our own channels to communicate. So now everybody believes that video is the right thing, but it, it's not the case. It's not the case at all. Uh, so today I'm going to try to give you some examples on when and why and how to, uh, to use video in your own marketing. And I just want to say that though I'm from Inkish and of course we always want to get customers, this is not a sales pitch. This is actually giving you information so you can go and do it yourself, right? So um, before I talk about the basics, uh, what, uh, what uh, Ulf uh, was referring to yesterday, uh, I don't know if you're aware of that, but we have made an agreement with, with uh, uh, Graphcom, so now they are in Sweden. Uh, that means that uh, in one of our strategies is basically to go and make local films in local languages rather than doing everything in English. Because the story is not better because it's in English. It just happens to be the universal language that most people understand. Uh, and what we aim to do with the films we do is basically to uh, have a great understanding of how we as an industry can become more successful is by sharing uh, the good stories. I learned that actually from Ola and Ulf because at the very first uh, Graphcom event I participated in uh, five years ago in, in Malmo, uh, I was really, really intrigued by the way that you are seeing how important sharing uh, information and sharing with each other can strengthen us as an industry. So this is, a, I think that's also why we have been working so closely with the Graphcom for Many years is that we share a lot of values in, in that perspective. Um, so, but let's. So, no. So, what I just want to say about Inky Sweden is that uh, uh, Ulf actually was baptized, kind of baptized yesterday, because uh, he was uh, <laughs> he was actually doing a, an interview for the first time ever, I think, uh, on film at least, uh, with Real Trick uh, here from from Stockholm. Um, so we are very soon going to uh, present our first Swedish uh, film about a, sw a Swedish printing company that is made in Swedish. We have made, uh, I think, maybe five, six, seven films from Swedish printing companies over the years in English. This is the first time of hopefully many in yeah. Swedish. 
And it was quite interesting because one thing is that we did this, that as an editorial feature from Realtrick. So that means there was no cost uh, for, the, for the printing company, but it opened up for quite interesting conversation. Because uh, as uh, 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 Patrick Nermark uh, said to, to my team was basically, uh, we need to uh, present ourselves to the public. So we want to have a film that is as a portrait film. They also want to have a, a lot of films with samples of their work because they believe that presenting the, the quality of the work and the way they do things could be something that could help them sell more. Everything in the printing, so we talk about the financial crisis, we talk about it, a decreasing industry. But just think about it, how many companies do you see in the world is actually presenting and promoting print as a product? How many printing companies are even using print in their own marketing? Uh, how many pr printing companies are actively selling print as part of the value proposition? It's actually a very good question because the ones that do it are the ones that we hate. That's like laser trick, online printers, fly alarm, and all those bastards, right? And we always say, we, oh, that's in camera, damn it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we always pick fingers at them and say that is bad because they are so cheap and they are only getting the jobs because of the pricing. My claim is that they get the jobs because they do something, right? So when we are talking to a printing company, the first one that in Sweden was in, in I was not even there. Um, when they start to talk about a need, it's a need for communication. It's a need of actually getting the messages across because if people don't know what you're capable of doing, how should they then have a demand for it, right? And that, of course, always comes back to, yeah, but film is expensive, marketing expensive, postage is expensive. Yeah, so is the printing machine, right? <laughs> you, can't, you can't say that you have a company where you are not marketing your services to your customers and prospects, otherwise they will not get there, right? It's not like in the old day where there was only a television that was impossible because the, all this in Scandinavia where we didn't have any commercial channels, it was impossible to market, so there was only print. That was the case 30 years ago, right? So I think it was great that the team was with Realtrek. I think it is a great opportunity for Swedish printing companies and the Swedish industry to get films on Inky's channel because it has two advantages in my opinion. It is storytelling within Sweden as an inspiration for the Swedish industry, but it's also a way for the Swedish industry to get international uh, uh, audience because we have a lot of people from around the world uh, that see our stuff. Right? Enough. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the basic first, because I said I really love print and I do love print. So we have to have to get something that is just like the first things here. Um, people believe sometimes that, okay, if we change marketing from print to video, then everything is good. But video isn't good in itself, because you can have bad videos, you can have good videos. And if you think about it for a, a second, uh, when is it that we are ready to consume different types of media? Uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, Sunday morning with the coffee and the, and the croissants, I love reading a newspaper because I have time. I like the paper, I like not the greasiness, but I like, uh, I like the time to dig into something that I was not even aware was existing because somebody on, a, uh, on an, and some of the editors were actually making a selection of things I like. So in that, uh, in that case, I like the paper. I, don't, I, I would hate it if it was Monday morning where I have to get my kids to school and kindergarten and everything like that. So, so you know, th at that time, the paper is good, right? Uh, video is, I can, I can browse it without really paying attention to it, but if I want to have the full, uh, I need to be focused on it. A podcast or a radio, I can consume that in the car while driving. I can consume it while I'm doing something else. Books is that when you really want to go in depth with things. Uh, outdoor, you see that because you, you pass through the, the city, right? So all the different channels, that is why when we talk to, to a lot of different, uh, not we, but we as an industry talk to a lot of people, we talk about that the omni-channel is the interesting part of uh, marketing because we pitch people and we communicate with them and we deliver messages that are right in that moment where they are ready to consume. So of course video in itself is not any better than any other thing. So that is a, a very essential first basic. So you cannot go home and slash your print marketing budgets and then say, okay, we spend everything on video. That doesn't work, sorry. So that again leads to the second, we can't replace print web apps, etc., for the same thing as I just said. 
Then another thing which is also important, to take a mobile phone and just do things yourself. It's maybe cheap, but if you want to use that uh, and edit it and make sure that it gets spread and you now spend some money on, on uh, SEO and on uh, advertising, on, on social media, things like that, you end up that the video itself may not even be cheaper than print marketing. So it's not because of cost you should choose video either. Maybe you will think that, okay, a lot of selfies of yourself driving in a car, giving the stories and your perspectives of the world as you see hundreds of thousands of people doing is something that brings value, value to your company and your story, but maybe not. Let's talk about that in a little bit later. And another basic, video is only good as long as it works. That means that you have, and that we will talk uh, also during the presentation a little bit about, uh, is all video good or some videos bad and when does it work and what is it you expect from it? Uh, so it's not because a video is always good marketing. We have to consider that as well. And then I think also a video can be done by anybody. Uh, they are not as good as Jan, for example. Uh, he's actually very, very good at it. But if you look at the internet and if you look at some of the social media channels, actually quite a few people get along with doing really nice films without having expensive gear, without having very, very long education in how to edit and things like that. And of course, that is something that you can consider. But don't think of that as a replacement of cost. It's just shifting cost from an external cost to an internal cost. The time that you spend on doing things takes time uh, if you want it to be good. And then I think that one thing that people sometimes forget is that video always, like all other marketing, needs to represent the values that your company have. Um, I, uh, we are very good friends with Deborah Korn from the US, for example. I don't know if you know her, but she's the one with antennas, right? Uh, she's not the one with the aliens. Do you know who she is? Yeah. She has got, she has made a, an appearance. She has got a, an audience. She is, uh, uh, she's built uh, on LinkedIn a group of uh, called uh, um, print professionals. No, I can't remember right now the name of it. Don't worry. She got 120,000 followers of that group. But that doesn't mean that she has like an audience because people are just following that group because I think that a lot of people would, would like to be connected with each other. We are, uh, uh, we are, we have a film with a, a guy, a British guy called Richard Askham. He's a speaker and a funny guy. Uh, he has made a speech about or a film about uh, we all want to belong to a tribe. So we are now we are the tribe here because we are now talking about Vita as our part of our communication. When you go home to your companies, you are members of new tribes. When you go get home to your families, you are again new, the new tribes. So there's a lot of these things that we need to be sure that that is effectively communicating to the tribe we want to attract to. So the values, if you, uh, if you want to be crazy like Deborah Korn in a positive way, she get an audience and she get that because she is very, very easy to recognize. When I said the antennas and the, and the aliens, I could see that some of you at least knew who she was, right? <laughs> And interrupt me if there's any questions, because I can talk forever. <laughs> and if there's any questions as well, just, uh, just uh, ask. So that was the basics. Let's talk a little bit about the essentials. Um, all the different channels that we are talking about right now, they, diff uh, they reach different uh, targets. So again, as I said before, one thing is that we have, in the morning we have the outdoor communication, in the afternoon we have the radios, and we have these kind of things. But also audiences are different. It can be based on age, it can be based on what we want to communicate. It can be based on the product. It can be based on a lot of different things, but we need to be sure that we identify the channel we want or the, the, the target group we want to, uh, to reach and then com communicate in a way that makes sense for that audience. Imagine that, I, uh, I was just sharing with Henrik this morning, uh, there's a McDonald's advertising in Denmark in the television right now, and maybe it's here in Sweden as well. And I think it's kind of cheesy, but it worked anyway. Imagine that you see a, a young family, they have got their first kid, right? They are in a hectic situation, uh, carrying the, the stroller up to the fourth uh, uh, level of their flat, and they are really busy, right? And, and you see maybe, maybe it's a two minutes video, and one and a half minute of that video is a situation that everybody can relate to. And since you know it's a commercial, you're from the, when you haven't seen it, you think about what are they advertising? And then they end up advertising that this young couple is sitting in McDonald's having a burger and a Coke and saying that, oh, it's really good to have family time. 
<laughs> and you know, it's so crazy because I mean, I think that if when when we say McDonald's, I don't think we think of restaurants. But if, I don't know if you have noticed, but they always call their burger joints for restaurants, right? And I think that if I asked Henrik out for a restaurant and I took him to McDonald's, he, I think he would be a bit disappointed. <laughs> so again, that is a that is a, you know you can also use humor in in how you you do this, these things. Um, so uh, as I put it on my on my, my presentation, it's a time age segment. Uh, it's important to understand uh, when we communicate. And you know the great thing about this: this has nothing to do with video. That is, this is about communication in general. So whatever uh, source of information you want to deliver, if you want video or print or websites or apps or whatever, the 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 the, 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 the basics and the essentials are basically the same. So so if you if you learn it, if you adapt it, and you do it. It's whatever channel you use, it is the same. Um, and as, as I said before, omnichannel is not just a word. It is really, really important that if you want to use marketing to promote uh, your company uh, or your services, you have to use multiple channels in order to get that message across. And you need to understand that all channels have uh, different values. One of the things, I don't know how it's in Sweden, but in Denmark, uh, the postage rates are so high, so direct mails has essentially disappeared. Uh, but in, in, in the US, uh, direct mail is one of the fastest growing uh, communication segments uh, in the industry, uh, which is kind of fun. And, and, and think about it, if you, uh, I don't know about your post boxes, but most of the thing I have in my mailbox at home is uh, household uh, brochures and, and commercials and junk, to be honest, right? Uh, I normally go like this. Right, more or less. I don't take a no thanks for it because I want to support the industry, kind of lame, right? <laughs> but uh, but that is a that is a fact that the most of the things that you get in the mailbox today is not postcards and it's not even invoices anymore, right? It's uh, it's uh, so when you get a letter that is addressed to you, and that's what the Americans have found out that when you get a personally something that is personalized, something that is put in an envelope, you can even buy services today where you can have hand, handwritten uh, letters in your direct marketing. Uh, there's, uh, um, I think, was it you, Ola, that actually uh, told about a company that, that had an algorithm. So or even if you post the same Word document or PDF document to that service, it created 1,000 different handwritings uh, just from that uh, PDF. So you can have handwritten kind of letters sent out. And it's not written, uh, printed. It's actually a pen that is writing them. So it, it looks like something that is personal. It is not personal. So there's a lot of ways where we try to navigate in order to get through uh, with what is uh, important. So the channels and how you choose to use those channels is extremely important. I think that one of the things, the second last one, which is, is uh, very important for us and which I think is maybe one of the reasons why Inkish has got quite a I think we have got a relative good repetition now, is because we have always been focusing on high quality, technical quality, try to do the right stories, try to be unbiased, try to be a media that is less commercial. No, commercial can be good, commercial can be bad, but we try to have like a focus on the story. We try to focus on what, what we believe is important for, for the printers, uh, which are our main audience. Um, and, if, and you know when you see video on social media, there's a lot of videos out there. Both professional companies and amateurs are doing a lot of bad video, bad quality, bad story, bad sound, right? And, and uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but when I see, uh, I w I, normally I wouldn't tell any names, but I will tell one name anyway. Uh, if you look at a company like Baldwin, uh, it's a huge company, they do uh, consumables, they do blankets, they are now owner of several different technology companies. Uh, they do their own videos uh, with a mobile phone, it's not because it's really bad, but I just think that the relation between what you see on a screen and know that it comes from one of the biggest brands in the industry, for me, it just doesn't compute, right? For me, it's like, okay, if they, if they make marketing videos that are not in the same quality as I know the blankets and the technologies, I can't relate to it. I think that, uh, I think that all of us understand that, that if we see something that doesn't relate to what we want the product to be, we will not, we will not like it. We will like, that is not true, that's not. So either do it right or don't do it, in my opinion. Uh, and then see yourself as a customer. Every time you do something on your own, 
try to see if you were the one that was like unbiased consumer of things, how would you see the things? How would you evaluate when your marketing team comes with something, see, this is really great. Why don't you just tell them, no, it sucks, it's really bad. I don't want, I don't want to share that story, it doesn't, doesn't work for me. Say that, otherwise you can't become better, right? Um, I want to show a couple of examples also on, uh, it's not something we have done, uh, and I, this is an example where I have taken two videos from YouTube, and I have made a print advert out of a still photo from the video. Um, so both examples are like real stories, and um, I think both examples are very strong in their communication. And I think, uh, I, th I think it will surprise you a little bit, I hope. I'll just see if I can get some internet connection on this one. What, is, uh, what do you see here? Uh, I see, uh, I, th 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 it's something I created, so it's not a real ad. Um, the thing is that I just took that frame because I think it was really a beautiful frame. I think it was great, and I think that uh, the, 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 the tagline I got was like, great because it's like free as a bird only challenged by the conventions and that was like that can mean a lot of different things right and if you click on it this is an example of a film from Strava it takes a few minutes I want you to see it So uh, was this advertising or was it, um, or was it uh, a, a, a film that, I mean, what, what do you think? What, what kind of uh, elements did it use in, uh, in your opinion? I mean, for me it was like played on emotions, on friendship, on collaboration, on nat nature experiences. It, it, you know, it touched, 
And I think especially if you're in the segment for bicycles, it touches everything because you want to have that experience. You want to experience this, right? You want to be those guys. You want to associate with them. And it was actually only in the end that you saw it was Strava that was uh, the center of, the, of this communication. And um, uh, the reason why I think this is a great example is that uh, they use video as their branding. So they have multiple films. I think maybe I think it was 10, 15 films, same length, same kind of footage, same kind of emotions that they build into it. These films are not cheap to do. This is like really high class production because it is a lot of footage from up and down and different locations and a lot of people and things like that. So, but this, I think that for the people where they are, I, is Strava like expensive bikes or? It's not bikes, it's, uh, oh. it's an app. It's what? It's an app. An app, oh. <laughs> see. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that. Okay. Okay. So that was even even worse. I didn't even see the communication of, <laughs> which is this is actually quite interesting because I was I was I was just searching for advertising on YouTube to see if I could find something that looks great, right? But they didn't even. I saw. I see. I've seen two films. I think, full from from end to end, and I didn't even think of it as an app. <laughs> so again, it's a, if they communicate to an audience where 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 you know it's an app, then it's great probably, right? But if you don't then maybe they should have put in like uh, something, right? So, but just as an example, but I think that you can see that when, when, when they use film in their communication, they want to build uh, a feeling and emotion around your brand, which I, I think... Would, I would put at, at the bottom, like download on App Store. Yeah, precisely, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you would know right away, yeah. Um, then we have this one. Uh, it's a new uh, Hyundai car. Uh, uh, and the driving experience is the new uh, Hyundai driving experience is fast, comfortable, and self-driving. And then you have some deals. This is like something I did it, you know, two days ago. So it's not like really fancy thing. But I think that you and and of course you can always argue that the, the that the, the the footage and 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 the details of the ad could be better. But I think that everybody understands. Okay, this is a car ad, basically, right? But let's see what the footage is actually about. And it's not pleasant. Julie. Julie. Well, I'll never see her again. Where we get going? Yeah. Never hear her voice. Happy birthday, Dad. Thanks, my God. Hear her laugh. Take care of my baby girl. I will. I'll never see her getting married. Sure, you don't want me to drive? I'm all right. I've only had a few. Besides, so been eating your mum's food all day. <laughs> Cuddle her children. She was here. Where is she? <laughs> we'll never hear her call me dad. And I'll never forget having to choose a coffin. <laughs> For my beautiful baby. What do you think of that? It's not a good emotion we see. Is, is this is a bad, but they played, they, they touched us, right? They used the video in a way that was, imp that would be impossible to create this one on print, in my opinion, or as a podcast, <laughs> or any other media. This is the strength of video, is that you can communicate something that is really, really strong, that touches you in, in ways that you can't, I mean, <laughs> I think it's so bad, this film. So I'm sorry that I brought it to you, but I just want, because one film was showing the good feelings, right? We could, we could, uh, we could have like, let's go on that, you know, that uh, apparently an app, <laughs> which I thought was a bicycle, right? And then we go to something that is so bad, but it started with showing something that could have been a, a, a new self-driving car advertising, right? So do you get my points about how we see a different way of, of doing things like this? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, then I have like a, a new slide. I hope we can get back to a better mood again. Uh, I call it communication consume. And that is because the questions that all of us have to ask 
when we are back home and we want to communicate to our audience, is print works best when? Just answer the questions yourself. Video works best when? And then you have like a lot of, you can even make the list longer. And, and the moment that you can put in that, that for your communication, whatever communication you want to do, you can end up saying that print is best when it needs to be. I bought these two magazines in an airport. Try to touch, send them around, just touch the covers. I'm st maybe some can enlighten me, but I just still think about every time I get the wired magazine, I just every time think about what paper is it and how do they do that effect. <laughs> so that is a tactile tip. You cannot have tactile uh, on films at all, right? Uh, <laughs> you cannot have it on an iPad. You cannot. So, so when people talk about replacing communication for electronic devices, we are still not in a situation where we have the tactile experience of print. But we don't have the same emotional toolbox as we just saw on video. So I think that it, I hope it proves my point that, that, that different media and different channels have different purposes, right? So when you answer these questions in your own communication, now you can start to think about how you actually take that message and make sure that it comes across to your audience, right? And that leads me to something that is really, really important, especially if you're in a printing company. Uh, in the 80s and the 90s, uh, at least in Denmark, there was, um, there was a kind of uh, situation where all printing companies, they wanted to be full service providers. And that was when you started to deliver print and websites. That was the full service <laughs> printing company, right? Uh, today, I think that's a, that's a, a new uh, way of doing things because uh, some is doing uh, uh, signage, some are doing different types of print, some are packaging printers, some are commercial printers, so there's a, a bigger diversity of printers today. But I still think there's a, a lot of opportunity also to offer some of these services like film to some of your customers. Because uh, if you can answer these questions, that talk track you can have with your customers when you talk to them as well. And one of the great things I like about uh, how the industry is developing is that in the 80s and the 90s, I, I found that a lot of printing companies were very much within themselves. We do everything in-house, but today it's much more that we are in a collaborative world. So it's more also a question about finding the right partners who can make sure that the communication is produced and delivered in a way that makes sense for the end customer. So uh, you will get the slides afterwards if you want, and then uh, you can just ask yourself some of the questions in order to figure out what makes sense for you. And I think that my conclusion, if I can say that, is that video is not better than any other uh, communication channel. But combined, if you combine all the channels, the omni-channel, if you combine that into a marketing com communication uh, uh, and, we, and we target our audience at the right points, at the right times, and you know, these kind of things, we end up with something that has a very uh, uh, high effect uh, for both us as companies as well as for uh, some of the customers who want to engage with us. Uh, everything is about engagement. Today we are in, in a situation where nobody really no, needs anything we, we are selling. So every time we are selling something, we are taking market shares from other people or taking away money that could be spent on something else. Uh, we are, in the Western world, we are way beyond, beyond Maslow's uh, uh, pyramid of needs. So we are in a situation that whatever, whether it's B2B or it's B2C, we are still in a thing where people need to engage with the companies that deliver uh, the marketing communication. Or the products, by the way, so it's not like that. So the question is, of course, your how to this, and the DIY is do it yourself. Um, as I said in the beginning, uh, we, we would of course love to, to work with, the, with the, all of you, uh, of course, but we have a price tag. So somebody might think, okay, it makes sense to start on your own and figure out what is, uh, how, we, how do we get started, what is it we want. Some of the things you will need to, to discuss internally regardless. Sometimes you will need to think about the slide before where I said print is effective for this, video is effective for this. Maybe you will conclude that video is not good for our communication because we believe our product is tactile, so we need to do it in print always. But then you still need to get the audience to get to it, right? So, so the how-to. Um, video is as easy as anything. Uh, everybody's got a smartphone. Everybody 
has made selfie videos or videos from events or videos from birthday parties and from uh, the production and what you see and overload on on, on both LinkedIn and, and Facebook is uh, salespeople and um, marketing people and printing companies that with vendors that just put the phone up and then show a press running. Right? You've seen that thousands of times, right? And every time Henrik is like, so what, do they, what, what is it they want to show? What, why do they do this? And I think that's when we are printers, uh, to some extent, all of us understand that if a printer is talking to a printer, it is interesting to see uh, speed and registration and quality and see 20,000 sheets per hour is like, wow, amazing. But our customers, end customers, they don't give shit about that. That they, they don't care. They are not interested whether you print digital or analog or if you handwrite anything, they are just interested in the output. That's their business. Right? So before you just start in your production filming the, the damn Heidelberg or the Dame Agfa or the Dame, uh, damn Canon, whatever equipment you have, just consider the things we started to talk about in the beginning. For who are you communicating? What segments are in the industry do you want to, to talk to? And what channels, what means do you need to use in order to get to that thing? So again, define what you want to communicate, define who you want to communicate to, define how you want to distribute this, and define your call to actions. The call to actions is uh, something that is extremely important sometimes. Because if you look at um, uh, uh, the, the car uh, film, the call to action was not to drink, right? <laughs> that was like the story that was don't drink when you drive. Uh, you can ask the, the, what was the call to action in the, in the Strava? There, I don't think there was any. I think they have decided from a marketing perspective, we just want to create something that is really beautiful, something that is really nice. So we have something around our brand that makes, feel, uh, they, that make people feel comfortable about it, which is a long-term marketing strategy worse something that is short-term. Uh, people sometimes ask what is the difference between marketing and branding or marketing and communication. Marketing is often driven by a need for call to action right away. You want to present something, you want to have sales within a short time. That's why somebody believes it's important to talk about conversions and click rates and all that shit. Right? When you talk about branding and communication, it has a long-term objective. It has a long-term objective. What, how do you want your brand to be perceived? You want your brand to be modern, fresh, agile. You want it to be boring, <laughs> whatever, right? So, so the call to actions are only important when you do films where you expect to do something that demand some kind of action right away from, from, the, from the viewer, right? And uh, then you have to think about how you get your message across. Because to make a nice film and just put it on YouTube doesn't do the job itself. It needs to be marketed some way. And uh, fortunately, there's a lot of ways to do it. I can just tell you that some of the issues that you will face when you start doing this is take a long time to build an audience, a long, long time to build an audience. Um, and I can give you an example on how bad uh, some of the, p the companies, and uh, there's particular Twitter and Facebook are the two worst. Uh, we did a, a test campaign two years ago in Denmark where I put up like a message in Danish on a Facebook page, and then I bought for 500 kroner uh, clicks uh, or conversions that were targeted for Danish audience only. So, I mean, Danish text, Danish Facebook web page, 500 kroner for Danish audience only, right? That should be pretty simple because I should get clicks from Denmark at least, right? I got about 50,000 clicks from Philippines and Egypt and India and things like that. So I reached out to one of the ladies that clicked on it and said, I was, I was a little bit pushy with her. I said to her, I don't know how much money you got to click on my ad, but I will pay you $50 if you tell me the story. And she did. It's click farms. There's click farms. They put up like hundreds of mobile phones that, uh, or they put up uh, services where uh, uh, every uh, freelancer is getting a web page where they are asked to click on ads. So they get paid uh, 0.5 cents per click they do, and they are very happy because they can make between five and fifteen dollars per day. And then I was thinking, okay, who are paying them for this? Because the only company I paid was Facebook or Twitter, right? So the only way they can get money is that Facebook or Twitter pay them to click on that thing to actually substantiate the value of their own platforms. That is fraud, right? That is illegal. 
it happens all the time. There's a lot of stories. If you if you if you search for click farms on, on the internet, you will get amazing stories and a ama uh, major uh, frightening evidence that a lot of the economy on, on the internet is not is not uh, real. It's fake. A lot of it is fake. So of course, to just buy your audience is uh, not a guarantee for success. Because what is the value of the internet? Is that the conversions? or the clicks, or the views? Or is it, okay, I made one click and I sold the machine for whatever price, <laughs> right? Uh, so the numbers, uh, this is one of the mantras that we are working on with Inkish all the time, because I said that we have 208,000 euros. We don't have any film with 208,000 euros. When we do Graphcom Live, for example, <laughs> a majority of the people that see these films are from Sweden, obviously. A lot of the content is in Swedish, right? Doesn't make, think, doesn't make sense to believe that we have a huge Australian or Chinese uh, audience for those kind of films. Doesn't make sense. When we do films in, in, uh, in India and in, in uh, China and in, in Japan, we have more people in Asia than we have in Europe. It makes sense, right? So when you communicate, you have to, when you define your audience and you have to, f and you find out how you get your message across, you have to put in some measurements that make sense. Because everybody talks about the fantastic opportunity with the internet, but the audience is really not bigger than the people you know any, any, anyhow else. It's just a matter of how you get that message across. That is important. Of course, you from time to time get new viewers and new audience and new customers because of your marketing activities. That's the purpose of doing it. I'm just saying that you have to put that into consideration. The numbers you can buy or the numbers that you can get unorganically have, in my opinion, in the B2B business, close to zero value. Technology. If all the things we talked about is in place, uh, the technology is not that important. Uh, I say that though we just bought that camera for, how much was it, 50,000 Danish kroner. So, <laughs> so that is maybe a little bit unfair. But it, I'm just saying that uh, a, there's a lot of things where technology is important. And of course, if you want to do something that is really on a high scale, of course, technology is important. But it's a mindset of all the things we spoke about that's most important. And I just want to show you, I found a website yesterday about uh, 10 films that are just made on a smartphone. So uh, I'm pretty sure that they spend time on lighting and sound and editing anyway. But it showcases that the technology that we carry in, in our pockets are actually stunningly good. My name is Elise Le Painter. I work as a chef research and development for Christophe Adam. I've lived in Paris for five years. This city inspires me with its many monuments and unique atmosphere. My work is to design and shape special desserts. Every detail is important. Everything has to be beautiful and tasty. I'm interested in the harmony between colors and textures. When I go to my local markets, ideas naturally come to me. I love to imagine in my head and draw pastries creation. Every day, I have the chance of working with one of the best pastry chefs in the world. Christophe Adam is like my mentor. I've learned so much from him.
One of my main goals is to bring intense emotions to the people. At 23, I'm living my child's dream and I can't wait to accomplish so much more. At least you get hungry, right? <laughs> um, the thing is with these kind of websites that claim that it's made on a mobile phone, of course you can never, like, it's not like evidence that it's actually made on iPhone or whatever smartphone. Hey guys, what oh. is going on? Yeah, what is going video, on? Sorry. We're talking about how you can get cinematic footage <laughs> with your iPhone. Yeah, that's good, my friend. <laughs> no, so, so of course that is, the question is not about so much about whether they're using an iPhone or not. The thing is that if you see films like this, I think that everybody clearly understands that it's about how you are able to create the story, how you can set the lights, how you can do all the movements and how you use the different technology. For example, with the oven, they were doing like time lapse. And I mean, there's a lot of technologies in this one. So I don't think that most of us will be able to go home and do things like that. I think the young can. And actually, uh, when we're doing films, uh, we often use uh, mobile phones uh, also to do footage with, uh, to support. Yeah, and other colleagues are doing them. Yeah. Stream it on the internet, so. Yeah. I mean, resolution is high, so. Yeah. If people are watching stuff on mobile anyway, they won't notice that it's not made with an extension. Yeah. And what we often do is, uh, for example, uh, there's, you know, when we have the interview things that when you're in a printing company, uh, then you, you do cover films or B-rolls afterwards where you cover, uh, like you, you do a lot of different films that you cover when you speak. So you don't see just the speaker, but you see what he's or she's talking about. That's called B-rolls. Uh, Jan and I often do like even, even I even use sometimes the mobile phone, sometimes a camera, sometimes uh, a gimbal. And then uh, I just upload everything to Jan so he can also pick from the footage that comes from other devices. And what they also do here is that they've spent a lot of time on, of course, making sure that you have the movements and you have like things. So it's a, I, I bet it's a relative or very professional photographer that is using it. And it's more to show that the technology can be used by what we have in hand. So instead of just clicking record on the, on the printing machine from your printing company, uh, you should maybe think a little bit about what is it you want to communicate, right? So again, as I said before, so be critical to your own communication. And it's kind of funny, uh, you, uh, because when we are listening and watching a film, we are using at least two senses. We're using our uh, visuals and our, uh, our hearing. And uh, sound is extremely important. Uh, and it's funny because if you have like, if you're using a mobile phone, you can even get wireless microphones that adds directly for a few, uh, at under a thousand Swedish kroner, you can get a, a, a Bluetooth uh, microphone. It's bigger than this one, but it will still serve the purpose of making sure that the sound is great. You can have a great looking film with bad sound, you, you can't see it. You won't see it. You, you, your head is is off, right? Uh, I want to show you, if you have time, in, in a second from one of our friend's competitors from an interview they did where it's so terrible that I don't want to show it because I want to pick fingers at them because that might be the situation for them at that point. But I just want to see how many can actually focus on listening to them in a second. Um, then uh, story is more important than the technical quality. So if you have good sound, or bad video and you have that combination, if the story is good, you can still be attractive for, the, for your audience. And then be true to your brand and your values. It's important because you can't be a high stake, high value company doing shitty marketing, regardless of what media you're using. So that, I think that's really important. I spoke a little bit about the marketing versus communication. So in marketing, you demand for call to action. You, you need a sales, right? Uh, in communication, you, you deliver more long-term strategy because you want... I'm, I'm working on, on a mantra right now because everybody talks about conversion rates. And, it, and the logic is that if you send out a newsletter, I don't know the opening rates of all the newsletters because they are pretty good. But if you look at general, the newsletters has an opening rate of between 20 and 25%. But they only have a click rate, an average of 2 to 3%. That means that if you send out, uh, like for example, what they think, they send out like 90,000, I think, 90,000 newsletters. If only a fraction opens them and only an even smaller fraction clicks on things, then you can, you can honestly ask the value of the newsletter, right? Because 
if nobody sees it and nobody clicks on anything, who is the value for? Maybe for the sponsors who are paying the advertising, uh, or the, for the owner who is only getting the advertising money, but who knows, right? So sometimes you have to think about whether it's a long-term strategy you're building on or you're uh, or actually asking for some uh, feedback right away. Uh, and marketing in general is annoying, right? Um, we accept it because it subsidizes the content that we want to have, but we don't like it. I don't know about you, every time I see a YouTube film and it has a five seconds ad, I just wait for the five seconds. Do you, you, re, re, you recall that one? And now they've started to put in two adverts. One you can't, you have to see the advert and then you can start clicking on it, right? And I close my eyes. I do like this. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it because that's not what I asked for. And what happens if you look at the logic of how marketing people think, if your conversion rates are 20% of 100,000 people and you want 40%, then you send out you're not 40%, but you want to double the quantity, you send out 200,000 newsletters. Or you send the same newsletter three times. But that doesn't mean that it's less annoying. It's still very annoying, right? <laughs> I don't know about the newsletters you have. Sometimes I'm wondering, did I really sign up for this newsletter? <laughs> uh, and some of the newsletters, you only just, you just maybe skip through them and then pff, delete them, right? Uh, sometimes you don't even delete them. They have zero value, in my opinion, to some extent. And that's the same with video. If you make video, that is cheesy, that is bad, that is always trying to make people buy. Buy, 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 buy. You might actually lose the value of your long-term branding of your company. So you have to think about that. Communication, however, that's nice because we learn, we engage, and we associate, right? Um, but we don't sell very fast. The videos with Strava, they don't sell anything on the video but it creates a brand awareness. So at some point you will think of Strava for whatever purpose and whatever product they have. So communication is long-term and marketing is short-term. Do it yourself. Um, you can do fine videos yourself, I'm sure about that. Uh, you can distribute for free on YouTube. Um, you can, as I said before, you can maybe even sell video services to your customers. Uh, Maybe you have to step a little bit up on skills, but a lot of printing companies already subscribe to Adobe CC and uh, Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects is part of the packages, so it's just getting started. Um, and you can easily and fast, if you do it yourself, communicate to your stakeholders. So, uh, for example, yesterday when FESPA closed, uh, we immediately turned out a message on English to, uh, about uh, how the situation is. So that is like instant you can get out right away, right? That's the advantage of doing it yourself. And if, we, if you use uh, production companies, uh, sometimes you will spend a lot of time because you need to script things, you need to discuss things, you need to figure out how to do that. And they don't know your business and they don't know your objective. So you will spend a lot of time explaining the, what it is you want to achieve unless you use companies that are within your segment. So when we sell our services, I think actually one of the we have, I think we have a couple of advantages. We know the printing industry. We are focusing only on the printing industry. So we know the printing companies. We know the customers. We know how to communicate that message. So that means that, the, that our customers, they have to spend less time on the pre-production. They can ask us to do a film, and we just ask them, what is the objective? We do the film, and it's often very good. Right? And some production companies are quite expensive. Uh, I tell you that the Strava film, I don't even dare to think about the budgets, but that is in the hundreds of thousands, right? So that is like, that's the limit. If you have like hundreds of thousands, uh, then it limits a lot of, uh, <laughs> it, it limits many printing companies uh, in any Western country to make more than one at least. <laughs> um, and some are very good and some are not very good, even though it's professionals that do them. Uh, people, we see, uh, Again, the value proposition is that if, if, you, if you find a, a production company online and, the, and their most important KPI is we are cheap, then ask yourself, cheap, does that equal good? Because you can ask yourself, if you talk about your own printing company, is cheap equal good when it comes to print? And it's the same with everything you do. It's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily bad either. I'm just saying it's not necessarily good. Uh, we have a public price structure, so everything that we do is, uh, is uh, we, have like, we have list prices that are public. So if you want, a f uh, we call it a, t a perspective film where we try to make a film. That is for sponsors. When I mean, we have editorial, it's of course for free. But it's, we have like 5,000 euro for making a, a film. 
Then we do a testimonial film, we add 2,500 euros to it, and we want to create something we call a demand video, we add 1,500 euros to it. So we end up having a price range between 5,000 and 9,000 euros plus travel expenses. The 5,000 euro is actually a quite low price tag. The 9,000 euro is probably in average of what production companies do. The, the production we did from Munich yesterday and the day before, uh, we were two people. We made 10 interviews, uh, more than 10 interviews, uh, five, six teasers and two daily show reports, two people. Uh, Bernd Sipper's team was more than 10 people and they were able in one, on two days to create one video of 1.48 seconds length, uh, 1 minute and 48 seconds length and rest it will come within the next couple of months. So production value is also speed to market. So just to give you an example of that, right? right? So uh, why are we a different choice? Uh, we, we, aren't, we aren't a production company, so we are picky. We don't take any customers. We don't, we don't do anything that is not related to printing industry first. We produce based on editorial standards. We have decided, which is also public on our website, uh, that we con conform to the seven news criteria of all the major newspapers in the world. So even though it's paid for, we try to live up to the editorial standards of being unbiased, uh, being on time, you know, all the things that you can read it. <laughs> and the second thing, which is very annoying for a lot of our supporters, we own the content. So when you, even you buy for it, you don't, give, you don't get the content. It just lives on our platform. <laughs> but that is also an advantage because being an unbiased media and we own the content means that everybody can link to it, everybody can use it, right? But it means that it's, it has a standard where we actually put our names on and say that we believe this is in our, aligned with our promise to our viewer. And we have a narrow audience. We are only focusing on the printing industry. So we don't care about McDonald's segment, we don't care about Coca-Cola, we don't care about Nike because they are not, that's not what we are trying to aim at. Always do the right thing. Choose your partner's channel that makes sense for your business. Uh, and if you don't have the money to do it right, don't do it. Right? Uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, of course. Uh, and we want you as customer. I've said that many times. Um, Inky Sweden, deliver your story to Sweden and to the world. Uh, or from Estonia. Uh, that's okay too. <laughs> um, Ulf at Inkish, Anders at Inkish. And uh, I think that Magnus and Ola, they have their own email addresses, but I'm pretty sure that they will accept orders anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, I hope you uh, could use some of the inputs for something at least. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.